In this video, we'll look at the effect of delta S, which is change in entropy, delta H, which is change in enthalpy, and temperature has on delta G, the change of Gibbs free energy, and also the spontaneity of a process. As we know, the change in Gibbs free energy must be negative for a spontaneous process. In this equation, change in Gibbs free energy equals the change in enthalpy minus the product of the temperature times the change in entropy. The sign of the change in entropy, delta S, and the sign of the change in enthalpy, delta H, as well as the value of T, temperature, low or high, can have an effect on the sign of delta G and therefore the spontaneity of the process. For example, Exothermic reactions that have an increase in entropy are spontaneous at any temperature. Endothermic reactions with a decrease in entropy are non-spontaneous at any temperature. In this equation, the sign for delta H is negative and the sign for delta S is positive, so it's an exothermic reaction with an increase in entropy. When the change in entropy is positive, we have a negative times a positive. So if you have a negative times a positive, that equals a negative for the product of T times delta S. So we have a negative change in enthalpy minus the product of the uh, temperature times the change in entropy. And that's going to give us a negative delta G regardless of the temperature. So if you have an exothermic reaction with an increase in entropy, the delta G will always be negative at any temperature, so it's spontaneous at any temperature. In the next equation, we have a positive delta H and a negative delta S. So that means we have an endothermic reaction with a decrease in entropy. So when you have a negative delta S, a negative times a negative makes a positive. So what we have here then is a positive delta H plus a positive product of T times delta S, so it's a positive and a positive, we are always going to have a positive delta G at any temperature. So a reaction that is endothermic with a decrease in entropy is non-spontaneous at any temperature. So we look at some other conditions for exothermic reactions. So this is the one we've just looked at. We have a negative delta H, an exothermic reaction. We have a positive entropy, increased entropy, any temperature, delta G will be negative, so it's spontaneous at any temperature. For the next set of conditions, we have a negative delta H, so it's an exothermic reaction, but we have negative entropy, so it's decreased entropy. At a low temperature, delta G will be negative, and that's a spontaneous reaction. And the reason is, the T times delta S is not positive enough to make delta G positive, and that's because the temperature is low. So our next set of conditions, we have negative delta H, again an exothermic reaction, we have negative entropy or decreased entropy, and now we have a high temperature. For a high temperature, delta G will be positive, and the reaction will be non-spontaneous. And the reason is, T times delta S is positive enough to make delta G positive, and that's because of the high temperature. So next we look at endothermic reactions. The first set of conditions is a positive delta H, so an endothermic reaction, a positive or increase in entropy, and a high temperature. That will make a delta G negative, which gives a spontaneous reaction. And the reason is, the product T times delta S, it's negative enough to make delta G negative, because of the high temperature. The next set of conditions, we have positive delta H, endothermic reaction, an increase in entropy, positive entropy, a low temperature, and that makes delta G positive and non-spontaneous. And the reason, T times delta S, it's not negative enough to make delta G negative, and that's because of the low temperature. And for the last set of conditions, we have a positive delta H, so endothermic reaction, and this time we have a negative entropy, so decreased entropy. At any temperature, delta G is going to be positive, and it's going to be a non-spontaneous process. So finally, a summary. We'll start with an endothermic reaction, so delta H is greater than zero, that's positive enthalpy, that's an endothermic reaction, and we have 
delta s less than zero, so that's negative entropy. So that's non-spontaneous at any temperature. Next we have an exothermic reaction with a decrease in entropy, and that's spontaneous at low temperatures. Next we have an exothermic reaction with an increase in entropy, it's spontaneous at all temperatures. And finally, we have an endothermic reaction with an increase in entropy, and that's spontaneous at high temperatures.